Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Jackson No with No Finance, bringing you small business centers the most up-to-date news and insights into the small business financing world across the country. So if you're a small business owner, you came to the right place. Today is October 7th. It's a Monday. We're going to go over the news from last week. Friday, the Labor Department dropped the September jobs report, which had a lot of good news, way better than what experts were expecting for September. And number two, we're going over tax relief for Hurricane Helene victims. Again, thoughts and prayers going out to all you guys there that were affected. It's been truly devastating. It's wishing the quickest recovery of possible. I know towns have been destroyed. So at the very least, for those that we can still help as far as your, as your business in the future, we're going to keep providing updates from the SBA and the IRS, FEMA, whoever it is, whenever they are providing relief and assistance for small business owners. And lastly, we're going to go over an article done by usnews.com about small business owners that took out an EID during COVID, the EIDL is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. And uh, that program has been going on for a long time through the SBA. And then they provided IDL for COVID specifically. So if you are a small business owner, you took out any IDL or during COVID and you're having trouble either making the payments or maybe you want to sell the business, stay tuned. We're going to go over that. First bit of news that we're going to go over is the tax relief offered for victims of Hurricane Helene. So if you're one of the affected areas designated by FEMA in Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Tennessee, or Virginia, you are now going to be able to file your taxes a little bit later. So typically they're due in the middle of April, but now you could file your 2024 taxes on May 1st of 2025 is the new deadline. And then also, if you had a valid extension for 2023 for your business or personal returns, those are going to be delayed as well, where you don't have to file those until next year on May 1st. So just a little bit of relief offered by the IRS for you victims from Hurricane Khalid. Also, I made a video last week about two different loan programs the SBA is offering. One is a physical property damage loan excess of whatever your insurance covers. So say you need to build, you need to do construction again on your building or do a new build at a different site and say insurance is going to give you a million dollars to rebuild it, but it's going to cost 2 million. The SBA is going to come in with that million dollars to complete the financing. So that is an option for you all. Also, if you say you're a business owner, you didn't have physical property damage, you can look into the EIDL. It's the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. And say you're operating at 25, 50 or 75% of what you were doing before Hurricane Helene, you could go to the SBA and see if you qualify for that EIDL. They can go up to $2 million. It's going to be over a 30-year term and the interest rate never goes over 4%. So another option for you small business owners as well, in addition to the tax relief. Second bit of news that we're going to go over is we're staying on the EIDL front. That's the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. But we're going to go over the borrowers that took out this EIDL during COVID. So back in 2020, 2021, it was a loan that was 3.75% interest rate across the board for each borrower. Most borrowers took uh, $500,000 or less, but there were a good number of borrowers and it took up to the $2 million mark. All these were spread out over 30 years. Some of the problems that have come up that I read about at usnews.com on the report done there, some of these owners now are trying to sell the business and they want to retire and cash out. But the problem is that these loans, again, are they had another 28 to 29 years of payments. And if you took out $2 million in payments or around $9,000 a month, if you took out a million around 4,500, if you took out 500,000, it was around 2,250, 2,500, I believe. So these, these new prospective business owners that are looking to buy these companies, they're looking at this and saying, hey, I don't, I don't want to take on this debt. For another 28 years. This doesn't make sense to me. So that's the problem that we're having. Also, for the small business owners that are going to be owning their business for a lot longer, say they're younger, they're 30 or 40, they're going to pay on this until they retire or sell the business at a later date. So their problem is accessing capital, but I think it's two of the same. So for the small business owners, they're probably worried about that they want to buy these businesses. They're worried about accessing more capital. So they need to buy more equipment, whatever their financing needs are. They're worried about accessing more capital because what they've heard is, is if someone has any IDL loan, they can't get another loan. Well, that's not true. Everything about the SBA is about cash flow. If the bank sees that you can afford another monthly payment, they'll finance you up to that $5 million with the SBA loan. Now, the problem is, is it's all about cash flow. So if that business is not cash flowing, then it's not worth buying. But if it is worth cash flowing, if you can afford more payments, then it is worth 
to be live. Second bit of news, we're going to stay on that EIDL front, the economic injury disaster loan offered through the Small Business Administration. But we're going to focus on the borrowers who took out this loan during COVID, so 2020-2021. Again, it's the same term, so it was over 30 years worth of payments. The interest rate was 3.75%. So if you took out a loan back then, it was $2 million at 3.75%. I believe the payments were around $9,000 a month. For 30 years. If you took out a million, it was around 4,500. If you took out 500,000, it was around 2250, $2,500 a month, somewhere in that ballpark. So some of the problems that have come up though now are these small business owners that took out that loan a couple of years ago, the payments were deferred for 18 to 24 months. So now they've only been paying on this for a year or two. So they have another 28 to 29 years of payments and they're wanting to sell these older business owners, they want to retire and sell the business, but they're having issues selling the business because the prospective business owner that wants to buy the business is looking at this loan and saying, I have to pay on this for another 28 to 29 years. It doesn't make sense. Now, here's where you can get creative. I've been able to do this with other business owners, but they've had EIDLs and they were worried about accessing more capital. Well, some banks don't want to go behind the EIDL loan, but there are banks, there's hundreds of different banks that offer SBA 7A financing. So they'll go behind the EIDL as long as your business is cash flowing. If they see that you can afford more financing, if you could take on more of a monthly payment and what you're owing, not only the EIDL, but if you took out an SBA 7A loan and you could afford the payment and your business is going to grow because of the financing that, that they extend to you through the SBA program, they're going to do the deal. So just because one bank says no doesn't mean that you can't try with other banks. So I always use smart biz loans and I'll leave the link here. But as long as you have good credit, business and personal, if your credit is above 650 and your business credit is fair to great then I would try smart business, let them know that, hey, this is my EIDL loan, but I need another a hundred to five hundred thousand dollars in SPA seven A capital. And here's why I need it, then you might be a good candidate for one of a smart business partner banks. I also one last one that had a $2 million EIDL loan that they were paying on. We were able to get them another $100,000 in SBA 7A capital. So I know we did it through smart biz. They were able to find a partner bank that liked the deal and they were able to extend them capital. And it was a win-win for the bank and for the small business owner. The deals are out there. You just got to know where to go, find the financing. And that's where I come into play to help you guys out. With that said, as far as the prospective buyers, what you could do is, you could finance the transaction through an SBA lender willing to finance the acquisition where you only have to put 10% down. But even though you're buying this business that has the IDL debt on the books for the next 28 years, this bank, they'll underwrite the whole deal and they'll finance that acquisition. So say you need to buy the business for a million dollars, you land to put a hundred thousand down through the SBA. So you will have to pay that new SBA loan of a million dollars, but they know just based on the books that through their underwriting analysis, that business can handle the cash flow of paying that debt of not only a million dollars with the SBA, but whatever that EIDL was before. So you can come up with some creative financing, but a lot of it, you can do it through the SBA program. That's what I always recommend trying out first. And then if you're a business owner that you're having cash flow issues, but say you have good credit, there are online lenders out there that will give you either a line of credit, a term loan, or emerging cash advance. If your credit has dipped since COVID, if it's under a 650, you can't do an SBA loan. You can't do a line of credit. You might have to do emerging cash advance just to get by in the meantime. I just caution you all, make sure that you're making the right decision for your business. You'll want to get in more cash flow issues, just taking on emerging cash advance that doesn't make sense. So again, if you all have any questions or want to run something by me, I'm happy to answer them and put you all in the right direction. Last bit of news, we're going to go over the jobs report done by the Labor Department that was released on Friday as well as ADP released their own independent report on Wednesday last week. And they only work with private sector employers. So that's probably more important to you guys that are watching this channel than the labor departments. But first, let's go over the labor department's review. So 250,000 jobs in September that exceeded all of the economists' expectations for September. So that was great news. 78,000 added in leisure and hospitality. 69,000 added in food services and drinking places, 45,000 added in healthcare. So those were the top three. 
Also in September, we had the first primary drop by the Fed since in the last four years, so since COVID. So that was great news. Hopefully we see that continue to trickle down. According to JP Morgan, their experts believe that it's going to drop another 25 basis points in November. So we'll see if that happens. So hopefully it just gets down closer to that level where it was before COVID. Also in October, or when we do this report again in November on October's numbers, it's probably going to drop dramatically due to Hurricane Helene, as well as the dock worker strike on the East Coast. There'll be a huge ripple on the supply chain affecting jobs and, and businesses nationwide. So it should be a little bit different looking at this report again next month. But based on ADP, they saw jobs grow 143,000 in September, beating their own expectations as well. And the way that was broken down, they said that the majority of those jobs were added in the South. They saw 61,000 jobs, whereas the West was the was the least amount in terms of regions. They added 22,000. Interesting enough, information services was the only sector that dropped. They shed 10,000 jobs, whereas the, the highest pleasure in hospitality adding 34,000 jobs there. So interesting there. I don't know about information services. They didn't speculate as to why so many jobs were cut in information services, but maybe it's due to AI and technology getting better where they don't really need as many humans doing the job. So, or they're offshoring it to other countries at a cheaper rate. That would be my guess. And another interesting fact here that ADP found, so they break, they, they break it down to small, medium, and large businesses. Large businesses are 500 em employees or more. They added 61,000 jobs last month. Medium businesses are 50 em employees to 499. They added 64,000 jobs. And the small businesses are 50 employees and less, and they actually lost 8,000 jobs, or they shedded 8,000 jobs more than they hired. So I thought that was really interesting. A lot of the people that are watching this show, I focused on small business financing and for small businesses to lose 8,000 jobs over the last month, where we see a huge boost in jobs that were hired last month or created last month, and we see small businesses actually lose jobs. It's kind of a head scratcher. I'm not really sure why that's happening. All that information was interesting. I'd love to hear you all in the comments. Let us know what you all are seeing. If you're a small business, have you all gotten rid of employees in the last month? If you did, why? We'd love to hear your feedback on that. If you're still tuned in, thanks for watching the video. We went over some great stuff today about the Labor Department's jobs report from last month, went over relief for Hurricane Helene victims. And then three, we went over how to access financing, even if you took out an EIDL loan during COVID, or if you're trying to sell a business and you took out an EIDL loan, how you can work with the prospective buyers on accessing capital in the future if they choose to buy your company. So whatever, a lot of great topics today. We'll see you again tomorrow. If you like the video, like it, subscribe to the channel for more insights and updates. I'll be doing this every day. And please let me know in the comments what you liked, what you'd like to see in the future. Or if you had to fire some employees like other small businesses did, would love to hear about that as well. So thanks guys.